Hello everyone, happy Friday, and welcome back to this Final Fantasy VI walkthrough with me, Jerupidus. In the last episode, we tackled Lock Scenario, escaping South Figaro with General Celeste in tow. The pair made it safely back to Narsh, so now it's time to take on Terra's Scenario. They're still on the Leet River, so let's find out what's happening there. Fleeing the Empire's troops, Bannon, Edgar, and Terra ride the rapids towards Narsh, but the going won't be easy. Now that's not exactly true. I don't find the going here particularly hard, but it will be a little bit more difficult without Sabin with us. But we're just going to keep doing the same things we were doing before Sabin left, which is auto crossbow, fire, and then health with Bannon, and we should be just fine. None of these encounters will be particularly difficult. Um, apparently each of these only has a 50% chance of happening. There are three in total. Um, but I seem to pretty much always get all three, so I guess I don't know if that's correct. But that is what the guides all say. Maybe I'm just lucky, who knows. Of course, now that I say that, we're gonna totally skip one. Yeah, <laughs> wow, we only got one, okay. I take back everything I said. Now we've got to head towards Narsh, so let's do exactly that. And let's see what happens if we head right in. Hey lady, didn't you just bust in here wearing Magitech armor? Uh, no, that was someone else, certainly not me. Bannon says, wait a sec. And the guards reply, get out of here. If you don't, and they give him a punch that sends him flying. Edgar says, hold on, I'm King Edgar of Figaro. And the guard replies, liar. And gives him the boot as well. Bannon says, ay yi yi And Edgar says, that kind of attitude is deadly. He won't even listen. Tara says, it's all my fault. Let's see what happens if we try to go in with Terra. Get out of here if you don't. And they give her the boot as well. I just wanted everybody to get a nice punch there. <laughs> I think it's only fair. Now let's pop in the training room and grab a full heal because it's free, why not? Now where we've gotta go is over to the left here by the secret passage where we got out with Locke right at the beginning of the game. Terra says when Locke first helped me, he fiddled with something right around here. Edgar says, knowing him, there's probably some secret switch in this rock wall. And of course there is. There's always a secret switch, right? And now we've got to navigate the mines, uh, sort of back to where we were when we were defending Terra from the guards. And it's a good idea to be pretty familiar with this area. Uh, you'll be coming back here more than once. Ooh. A Pintzer attack, you say. And with some first classes, so we can leave this in. Let's go ahead and give the ones on the right side a Bio Blaster, and then we'll do a single target fire on this one, and that might just take them out in this round. I might not even get a health off, but that's okay. Oh, I do. All right. We'll go ahead and auto-crossbow him down. Should have no problems in here. These encounters are not particularly dangerous at all. But they do at least feature some new enemies, so that is nice. All right, so now we've got the security checkpoint. And if you watch the light, it's gonna show you the right path out of here. Edgar says, goodness. Tara says, what's that? Edgar says, I think this is a security checkpoint. If we follow the light exactly, we'll probably be okay. If we make a mistake, the light will surround us. To proceed safely, we must tag the glimmering light. Now, interestingly, in the Japanese version, they explain that this is actually a training area for the Narsh guards, which helps this area's existence make a little more sense. And what we're going to do here is do this wrong immediately. <laughs> for a couple of reasons. One, to demonstrate that this minigame is actually pretty easy, and you can just kind of defeat it and go any way you want. But we want to do it wrong because there is an encounter in here that I want. And it is, of course, not this one. These are just two dark sides. 
But what we want is a very special encounter. Unfortunately for us, it only has a 25% chance of happening when you fail at the uh, security checkpoint here. So I'm going to show this one, and then what I'm going to do is do this over and over until I get the uh, encounter that I want. So we'll cut right to that. All right, this is the one we wanted. We've got Dark Side, Spectre, and Rift. This one is kind of difficult to get to happen, but it occurred for me on my third time through. But the nice thing is that at least you get to do a little bit of grinding. I'll explain why we're doing this a little bit later, but suffice to say for now, this is an encounter you can only get here. And we get to do a little bit of grinding, level up, and grab Drain for Terra, which is nice, but we probably won't be using this. But yeah, I have to sit through this animation every single time we fail. <laughs> so it is perhaps not the best grinding spot, but at least we're getting to grind while doing something productive. So let's go ahead and do this correctly this time. And that's not too tough at all. Seems like any bozo can be a, a Narsh guard, so... <laughs> Honestly, that kind of makes sense. And through here is where we want to go. So this is the spot where we were defending Terra, and where we're looking for is right above it where the Moogles came out of. And of course, this is the Moogle Hangout, and there are lots of them in here. They're all just gonna say Kupo, except for this one standing still up here. He's gonna say Kupo, Po. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And man, do I love this song. It's just fantastic. Now, if we come through here, there's gonna be a treasure box. If we opened this right now, we would get a Rune Edge. And what that would do is it consumes 12 to 18 MP to do a critical hit every time you attack with it, which is an interesting sword, uh, but it's going to become something better later, like a lot of the treasures in here, so we're gonna leave it for now. It is something you could consider doing if you prefer the fight command to using magic attacks, but you really shouldn't because magic is just absurdly better than fight in this game. actually got in kind of a lot of fights there, and there's something I want to mention right here. Uh, I guess this is kind of ridiculous, but if you are playing this on an emulator and you remove the layers, uh, one space to my right that you can't get to is a sprint shoes, and I think that the developers put that in there for them to use during testing and then just moved it a uh, tile over so that it's not actually in the game, but you could get it right away probably when you were testing, which is kind of neat. Anyway, let's head inside. And it's the old man that Terra met right away at the beginning of the game, but he has a name now. His name's Arvis. He says Bannon, King Edgar, and Terra. Bannon says, Arvis, what's happening here in Narsh? Arvis replies, the town's neutral. I've tried to get the people to side with the returners, but... Anyway, why on earth have you come here? Edgar says, first, how are your people doing? Arvis says they all went slightly berserk when the Esper was discovered, which I can imagine would cause quite a commotion, yeah. Bannon says, we believe this young woman is our only hope of reaching out to that Esper. And I just want to point out the sprite work there, where Bannon is looking her in the eyes very intensely and Tara blinks at him like that. The sprite work in this game is just absolutely amazing. Arvis says, my people are dying to know what the Esper looks like. Maybe Terra can help restore some order to our town? Edgar says that Esper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. And that's the end of the scenario. It is very, very short, so what we're going to do is jump immediately into Sabin's scenario. Let's go. What dire fate has befallen Sabin, who fell from the raft after the fight with Ultros? And he's washed up on shore right by this house over here, so let's pop in and check it out. Now the first thing you're going to notice is this guy on the chocobo, but we're not going to talk to him right away. We're going to let him go for now. He'll be back. Let's talk to the dog first. Whoa! Dog just can't stand strangers. <laughs> <laughs> and that is true. Interceptor does not like strangers. He just likes his dad, Shadow. So let's talk to him. 
Savin says, you on a journey? I got separated from my friends. Say, can you tell me how to get to Narsh? Shadow replies, Imperial soldiers have built a base somewhere beyond the forest. Sabin says, already? Shadow says, they seem to have their sights set on Doma Castle. So Doma's next, huh? I have to reach Narsh immediately. Shadow replies, your only hope is through Doma. I'll show you the way. Just know that I may take off at any time if I feel like it. And he's not kidding about that. Uh, during this section, you have a 1 in 16 chance that Shadow will leave the party at the end of every battle. Now, we're going to try keeping him. Um, if he leaves, I'll show that, but I'll just do this over and get him back. Uh, but that's only going to happen if we're really unlucky, so let's just hope we're not. Welcome a partner. Yes, we will. And Shadow says the Reaper is always just a step behind me. Which is such a cool thing to say. <laughs> so now that he's in the party, let's immediately throw him in the back row. And um, we don't have anything to give him equipment-wise. So let's check out his skills, which is going to be the throw command. I guess it's not going to show up there, but we'll talk about it right away anyway. What throw does is deal double damage, uh, ignores defense, and deals full back row damage. When you throw a uh, weapon, it's going to ignore the special properties of the weapon, so a thrown weapon can't proc or anything like that. But the elemental properties, so let's just say for a simple example you have an ice sword, uh, that elemental property will still count. So it's a pretty sweet ability, and it's much, much better than his fight command, like basically every skill in this game. So we're going to be using that a lot. But for right now, let's head inside the house. And we can already tell by the music, it's gonna get weird in here. So let's talk to this old man. The aged man says, hey! You the clockmaker? I've been waiting for ages. Uh, no, I'm not the clockmaker. The aged man says, there it is on the wall. Ain't been ticking for one, five, shucks, maybe even ten years. And oh man, is he weird. Let's talk to him again. The aged man says, got it. Lawnmower repairman, eh? Couldn't provide worse service. Grass is 25 feet high out back. And I feel like that's maybe more your fault than the lawnmower repairman's fault, but whatever, let's talk to him again. The aged man says, no more lip repairman. Fix that stove on the double. We're not gonna do that right away. We're gonna talk to him one more time. And he says, goodness, then you must be. You're here to fix my bed. It's squeaking like all get out. And now, I don't really want to know why an old man's bed would be squeaking like that. Uh, but let's move on to the stove. <laughs> Youch! Whew, no child could be this mischievous. The aged man says, child? Ain't no child round here. Balderdash. I'm ready for you to leave. Go on, get. I'm tossing you out onto the veldt. And, ugh, I'd rather take a stick in the eye than deal with that guy again. Yeah, he seems pretty insane. But now let's take this opportunity to talk to the uh, traveling salesman here. Who are you? The merchant says, howdy. I own the dry goods business out here. Now, I don't know why he's dressed like a green suit, but that doesn't really matter too much. The merchant says, you're not from these parts, huh? Well, no matter. And let's check out what he has to sell. And there's going to be some interesting things here. The first thing we're going to do is buy a couple of plumed hats. Those are going to be upgrades for uh, Sabin and Shadow. And then I'm going to go right ahead and buy 99 of these shurikens because we're just going to be using the throw command and I don't want to run out. You probably don't need 99, but we have tons of money anyway. So let's go ahead and do it. And then let's talk about these two things. So this one is the Invis Edge. And when you throw it, you will gain the uh, clear or Invis status. Which, as I discussed when I was talking about the Invis Doom glitch, means that magic's going to hit you 100%, but physical attacks will hit you 0%. It is pretty sweet, and we're going to buy one, because having Shadow be invisible for this section of the game is pretty useful. Moving on to the next one, the Shadow Edge will grant the image status, and what that means is I talked about it a little bit in the training room. Physical attacks will always miss, but each time you dodge, there will be a 25% chance to end the status. But it won't have you be 100% vulnerable to magic, so it's kind of a trade-off there, but we're gonna go with the Invis Edge, and I'm gonna grab a sprint shoes because I want to walk faster. The merchant says, see you around, and there he goes. So let's get equipped up here. And let's go ahead and throw the sprint shoes on Shadow. Now we have plenty of things for him to throw. He's in the back row, so we're ready to go. Let's keep going. 
All right, so let's head for that Imperial base. Now, there's one encounter that I want to get out here. Um, it won't be here. But this will give us a chance to get a look at uh, the Throw Command, which is really, really good. And there are a couple of interesting things going on with Shadow's battle mechanics. 50% uh, of the time, Interceptor will block incoming attacks. And by block, I mean he will significantly reduce the damage. Um, and then 50% of the time after that, Interceptor will do a counterattack, either Takedown or Wild Fang, which will be a magic defense ignoring magical attack. It's very, very strong. Now, the encounter I was talking about is going to be in this forest, so let's try and get it right now. Boom, there it is, the Stray Cat. And the reason we're doing this, once again, is something I will elaborate on a little bit later. Um, this is not your only chance to encounter the Stray Cat, but because it's here, I just kind of want to get it done right now. And let's give the poor little kitty a suplex. <laughs> Doesn't seem right, but oh well. And down they go. First encounter, too. That is very, very nice. Let's keep going. And so far, we've been pretty lucky with uh, Shadow's leave rate. Obviously, that's only going to happen if we're very unlucky, but stopping by the forest to get an extra encounter does increase the chances that it will happen. And I am not a particularly lucky person when it comes to RNG stuff, so... I'm really, really hoping that doesn't happen, and I will have to do this whole section over again. Oh, and I should have thrown that Invis Edge by now. So, you know what? Before we head in there, let's get in one more encounter and throw that Invis Edge. Before I forget, I am I have so many things to talk about. I want to get that invisibility status, because a ninja should be invisible, right? There we go. And it's uh, a very good thing to have up because basically everything in this section is only going to do physical attacks on Shadow. We are, of course, ending up having to roll the dice on him leaving one more time, but I think we're going to be okay. Looks like we're good. Let's get in there. The Imperial Camp. All right, let's head inside. This is an Imperial base. Too many soldiers. And yeah, that's probably more than the two of us can handle. Soldier A says, hey, have you heard? And Soldier B replies, oh, you mean... Soldier A shushes him, quiet down. If Kefka catches us, we're toast. Soldier A says, if he drives General Leo out of our battalion, he'll probably become the next general. Soldier B says, don't make me laugh. If someone like him becomes a general, I'll go home. Soldier A shushes him again. What if he hears you? You'll be jailed. Soldier B says, all right, all right. And here he comes. Uh-oh, here he comes. Back to the waiting zone. Kefka says, hey, you, you keeping a sharp lookout? Soldier A says, yes, sir. You're Kefka, correct? How are you, sir? Kefka says, please, save your petty small talk. Just do your job. Soldier B says, huh. Someone's got to put that guy away. I'd like to tell him to his face he's no General Leo. Soldier A shushes him a third time. Do I always have to tell you to keep it down? You're hopeless. I hate that weirdo Kefka. I don't even think he's human. Not like General Leo. Soldier B agrees. The commander rushes up. You two, we're about to storm Doma Castle. You will join the assault team. says attack and they do attack but it's not really clear what they're doing on these outer walls <laughs> the imperial soldiers are kind of bungling idiots but the doma sentry says it's hopeless we can't keep them out so 
It's finally happening. A moment, sir. Allow me the honor. Faithful retainer to his family's liege with the courage and strength of a hundred men. Oh, yes, it's Cyan. I love Cyan so much. Let's go. Cyan says if we can fell their commander, they'll surely give up. Let us give it a try. And we walk right out the front door. Doma Sentry says, Sir Cyan, let their commander have it. And I will let that commander have it, but we want to talk about a couple of things first. First of all, let's put him in the top slot and in the back row. We won't need him in the front row for his skills, and let's talk about those for a moment. It's called Sword Tech, or in the Japanese version, Bushido. I will probably refer to it as Bushido because I just think it's a better name, and I think now most people know what Bushido is. Anyway, we have three of them here, and once again, we have the helpful text in the top, but it doesn't really tell the whole story. So Dispatch, or in the Japanese version, it is called Fang, uh, has a random target. It is, in fact, a single attack, but it's got a random target, so that's a little bit of a drawback, but it ignores defense and deals full damage from the back row. It's very, very good. Uh, we'll be using that a lot. This one here is called Slash or Tiger in the Japanese version. The reason I'm telling you the Japanese names is because I actually like the English versions because I find them a bit more descriptive. Names like Sky, Tiger, and Fang don't really help you have an idea of what the ability might do. But, the description text is correct, it does in fact have an enemy's HP, and it always hits, except when it doesn't. <laughs> if the target ends up being immune to the wound status, it will miss, but other than that, it has a 100% hit rate, and deals 50% uh, damage. Now, Retort, originally called Sky, is a very, very interesting one. So, when you use it, you end up under Retort status, and what that means is that whenever Cyan gets attacked physically, he will counterattack with uh, Retort, which is a magic attack that ignores magic defense. However, Retort has a couple of bugs associated with it, uh, the first of which is that if Cyan gets hit under Retort status but the incoming hit KOs him, and then you resurrect him, he will use a Retort counter whenever any physical attack happens. So if one of your party members attacks an enemy, Cyan will then execute the Retort command. He'll Retort on the enemy, not on one of your party members, but I think you understand. So the second glitch is that if Cyan is under the Imp status, while he's under the Retort status, if he gets hit, he will counterattack with a regular attack and not the retort attack, basically meaning that he can never lose the retort status. So if you combine these two together, you get what is colloquially known as the Psycho Cyan bug. So if Cyan is under imp status and under the retort status and the incoming hit KOs him, once you resurrect him, he will counterattack the enemies over and over until every enemy is dead because he is counterattacking with a regular attack. And because a regular attack is happening, he's counterattacking again, so he will just keep attacking until everything's dead. It's an amazing glitch and really cool. I'll be sure to demonstrate that at some point, but for now, let's get into this thing. So one thing that I want to mention first, you can't just leave. <laughs> the Doma Sentries remind you, Sir Cyan, let their commander have it. But what you can do is actually kill all these soldiers that are attacking the castle. Now, I'm not going to do all of them because that would take a very long time. I'm just going to do one so we can get a little bit of a look at Bushido. Now, I did it very quickly there, but the meter on it uh, charges, and you can see that we only have one, two, and three, but it fills up very, very slowly. So it ends up actually being, like, not a great ability due to the active time battle system because the trade-off is that you're kind of wasting time, which is not something you want to do when the enemies can take actions. But that being said, it is still pretty strong. It's a perfectly fine ability, but it is not among the best. Let's go ahead and get this commander. I am Cyan, retainer to the king of Doma. I am your worst nightmare. <laughs> I love the idea of telling someone you're their worst nightmare, and let me tell you, Cyan is actually this man's worst nightmare. We're gonna go ahead and fire off a retort since we talked about it so much. And as soon as that leader attacks Cyan, he is going to one-shot him to oblivion. 794 damage, let's go. I love Cyan. And we get the black belt drop. This is the rare drop from this encounter. 
Um, and it's a pretty sweet relic where you get a 25% chance to counterattack a physical attack. So it's an appropriate drop for this fight since we just did a counterattack. It's not amazing, but it is a pretty good relic for this point in the game. The trooper says the general's been defeated. Run! Cyan says walled up in there, we can wait out our enemy. And now we're back in the Imperial camp and Shadow is leading, which I don't really want. So let's get Sabin in front, I think that makes the most sense to do. And let's see what happens. So we can uh, go ahead and confront this soldier right over here. Sabin looks surprised, but we're doing this on purpose. And that's because I just don't mind killing Imperial troops. But also, I guess you could maybe consider this to be a bit of a cutscene. We don't really need to use a shuriken here, but I'm gonna anyway. <laughs> Give him the business, Shadow. Alright, there's gonna be nothing in this tent. But the one over on the right is gonna be a little more interesting. There's this dog outside who will bark at you if you talk to him. There's going to be a chest on the right side. Ugh, the top won't open. Right, so we have a couple of options. We can kick it, hit it, or leave it. If we leave it, we won't get what's inside, so we're going to not pick that one. If we hit it, we will get what's inside, but we won't end up in the fight that we want to get by kicking it. So let's go ahead and kick it. Youch! And somehow we managed to hurt ourselves kicking the chest. No! A sentry! And we're gonna get attacked by these Dobermans. Now, this is the only time in the game that you can end up in a fight with Dobermans. So that's why we're doing this. Once again, I'll explain the reason to do this later, but you can tell these guys are pretty tough by the fact that a single shuriken did not take that one out. Ooh, is the other one not gonna flee? Usually they'll flee. Okay. Wasted a shuriken then, but that's okay. We got the fight we wanted. It's our only opportunity to do so, and there's lots of uh, stuff in here that is very, very missable. So let's go ahead and hide again. A soldier's talking to General Leo. General Leo, the citizens of Doma seem to be playing a waiting game. Leo says, so, that's their strategy. The soldier says, General, we're ready to take the castle. Just give the order. And Leo says, patience. If we attack now, we'll have to sacrifice too many lives. The soldier says, but General, I'm ready to lay my life down at any time for the Empire. Leo says, you're from Miranda, right? The soldier replies, y yes, sir. Why? Leo says, and your family lives there? Fall in battle, and I'll have to deliver the bad news. What shall I say to them? You have a life to go back to someday. Don't throw it all away for nothing. Emperor Gestahl wouldn't want that. Now, I think Leo's maybe giving Emperor Gestahl a little bit more credit than he deserves, but anyway. The soldier says, yes, sir. And we're kind of getting a picture that General Leo is a pretty honorable guy. The soldier runs up, General Leo. A carrier pigeon from Emperor Gestahl. Leo says, what? The Emperor summons me. I must return immediately. Soldier says, I understand, sir. Leo says, right, I'll leave Doma in your hands. The soldier says, yes, sir. Okay, just don't jump the gun. Please. The soldier says, sir, leave it to us, sir. Leo says, right. So that's General Leo. He could be my friend if you weren't my enemy. And that's right. General Leo, he serves the wrong side, but he does seem to be a good person who cares about people, despite the fact that he's a general in the Empire's army. But as soon as we go inside, oh, we gotta hide again, because here comes Kefka. Kefka says, now that Leo's gone, I'll turn this water into a flowing river of poison. And this is the moment, I think, where you start to see Kefka a little bit differently. At first, he seems like kind of a weirdo jerk, but not supremely evil, and right here is a big change. Leo says, the Emperor has ordered me to return home. I don't want any trouble here. 
Kefka says, you loser. I'll take care of this situation in no time. Leo says, don't be pompous. And don't forget that they are people just like you and me. Kefka says, we need not spare those lands that gave rise to the Returners. Kefka says, you just go and be a good little boy. Kefka says, is the poison ready? And the soldier says, but General Leo said... Kefka says, he's no longer here. I'm in charge now. Pour it. The soldier replies, some of our people are prisoners inside the castle. If we poison the river... Kefka says, do it. Take them all out. And you see here, Kefka doesn't care about anyone. But Savin has heard enough. That's inhuman. Kefka says, uh, silence. Your history, bub. And now I'm gonna do a, a suplex on Kefka because he has this coming for sure. <laughs> Kefka says, Youch! Sabin says, Kefka, wait! And Kefka laughs. Wait, he says. Do I look like a waiter? And he runs off. Wait! Let's chase after him. Wait! And now we could go confront him, but there are a couple of things that I want to do first. The first is take a look at this machine up here. Uh, the reason we're taking a look at this will become clear in just a second. But we're going to go up this way. And what I'm going to do is grab this chest here. This is the Mithril Glove. What the Mithril Glove does is it's uh, plus six defense and it will cast safe on you, which will reduce physical damage by one third when your HP gets low, which may be too little too late. But we're gonna go ahead and put it on over the Genji Glove because we were using the Genji Glove just for a little bit of defense. But we're going to want to put Sabin in the front row because we're gonna need his physical attack in just a moment. Let's go ahead and give Shadow the Black Belt, why not? I think that makes sense to do. And then I'm gonna hop around back first. This is probably a treasure that a lot of people miss. You have to go all the way there and then you'll hop down and when you come in here, you'll find a barrier ring. Now what the barrier ring will do is uh, plus two magic power and it will cast shell, which is similar to safe, but it will reduce magic damage by one third when your HP is low. Once again, that might be too little too late, but it's a couple of cool relics, so I'm glad we found them. And so the reason we have Sabin in the front row is because of this. Monster in a box. And this is going to be the Telstar, which is the machine we saw over to the right. Now, this guy has 1800 HP. And he will counterattack any Blitz with Mega Zerg, which will Berserk everyone. Now, you will do 50% more damage with physical attacks, but you will only physically attack. Oh god, he is giving me the business today. Um, I guess I'm just going to let that go and keep fighting. Now, Telstar is no joke. Uh, the Mega Zerk will mean you lose control of all your characters, which is not good. And so you can absolutely lose this fight. Uh, let's go ahead and do a potion for a full heal. I do not want to lose Sabin right now. That would be very, very bad. Could Shadow just attack himself, please? Of course not. And now Telstar is summoning reinforcements, which is not good. I'm just going to fight Shadow and get this off him. <laughs> oh, there we go. And now I wasted a fight. This is going great. <laughs> but if you're not prepared and you fire off a Blitz on Telstar, you can end up in a lot of trouble. So we're going to use Sabin's physical attacks uh, to make sure that we're targeting the soldiers. That is dangerously low. Let's throw down another potion. Oh my god, Telstar does not want to lose today. This is absolutely <laughs> the most trouble I've ever had with this fight. This is insane. There we go. That got really, really hectic. <laughs> 
So what was I saying? Right. So if you don't have a plan coming into this, you can absolutely lose. It is a dangerous fight, but it is also the only time that you can fight Telstar. So you do really want to get it. Not only for the encounter, but you get a tonic and the green beret. The green beret is a really, really sweet helmet, especially for this point in the game. It will give you plus 10% evade. In fact, we're going to see that right now, uh, which doesn't matter, of course, because evade doesn't work. But the other stat boosts are nice, and it increases your uh, max total of HP by one eighth of your total. So now Sabin's got 325 HP, which is very, very nice. Let's go ahead and get healed up after that fight that we very nearly lost. <laughs> <laughs> and keep on going. Now let's confront Kefka. Kefka says, ha ha ha, what a toad. And we are going to suplex him again because I can't get enough of watching Kefka get suplexed. Boom, right on your dome, Kefka. And he's going to have the same thing to say. Apparently, he doesn't have very many jokes. <laughs> Just the one. Kefka says, huh? How long do you expect me to put up with you? Next time, you're a goner. And that might be true. Now, before I forget, I'm going to get Sabbath back in the bag, bro. And I think we're ready to take this on, so let's go. Kefka says, oh, right. Hey, you know what's good for you? And then he runs away, and I like that the soldier kind of looks dumbfounded, like he doesn't even turn to face you. <laughs> now, fortunately, dark status is not going to affect our uh, combat effectiveness really at all, so we're just not going to worry about it and wear our cool shades. Actually, Sabin kind of looks like Johnny Bravo right now. <laughs> I'm liking it. is probably overkill, but once again, we're going to use it anyway, because why not? Bam! We've got a million of them. But we couldn't stop him. Kefka says, hee hee, nothing can beat the music of hundreds of voices screaming in unison. <laughs> and he poisons the river. My lord. What a monster. The Doma Sentry says, Sir Cyan! The Empire's base is bustling with activity. Something must be up. Cyan says, huh? The water looks odd. What is happening? Everyone is dying. Doma Sentry says, Sir Cyan. Cyan says, this is poison. What low down, contemptible. Cyan realizes, guard our liege. To the king, on the double, let's go. The problem is, if everyone on the walls died, there's just no way the king is still alive. Science is right, the king's room is near. Science says, your highness, fear not. And the king of Doma says, who's there? Cyan, excellency. King of Doma says, indeed, my sight is going fast. I can't see a thing. Cyan says, excellency, hang on. And the King of Doma says, Cyan, you have defended the realm since my father's days. And he coughs. Thank you. It's over. Our kingdom is through. Cyan says, not yet, highness. The King of Doma says, I fear for your family. Ugh, chest is on fire. Cyan says, save your strength. Don't talk. And the king says, go, run to your family. Highness! But the king is gone.
Doma Sentry says there's Cyan. Cyan says there have to be some survivors in the castle. And Doma Sentry says let's split up. And that's what we'll do. Highness. But I'm gonna tell you right now, there are no survivors. Now there is one area we wanna check out before we head directly to where we're going, and that's gonna be over here. There is a remedy to find right here, which is kind of a cruel joke, right? I mean, a remedy's right nearby, but there's a dead body right next to it. That is just terribly ironic. Doma Sentry says, Sir Cyan, we're through. And if we check in here, Science says here too. And I love the way they don't show you what's in the room. You just know he walks in there and everyone is dead. And they don't even need to show you. And it kind of lets your imagination run wild, which is very cool. I mean, tragic, but a very nice touch, I think. So let's head to where we need to go, which is right over here. And this is maybe the most tragic scene in the entire game. Elaine, Elaine, wake up. This, this can't be happening. Uh, Elaine, not you too. Son, you can't both leave me. But his son is dead too. D dear me. I impossible. Idiotic! We can't forgive this. The Empire must pay. And that's right, they killed everyone in his kingdom, including his wife and child. I am Cyan, retainer to King Doma. Soldiers say the enemy. Get ready, everyone! Sabin says, oh! What's going on over here? Now, before we uh, help Cyan out, let's see what happens if we try to leave. Sabin says, Wah! Is that poison? This isn't gonna be easy. And if we try to head the other way to where the barrier ring was, Sabin will say, That guy's a sitting duck. Gotta help him fast. So let's come over here and help him. Sabin says, May I give you a hand? Cyan says, Thank you, whomever you are. And it's just some grunts, so they're not going to be too bad. But we're going to go ahead and take them out as quickly as we can. And Horribolts and Shurikens will do the trick like they always do. There's that Interceptor block and a takedown. This is going to be fat damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is too much. I don't know why Shadow's in the front again. Let's fix that. Sabin says, let me have at it. Science says, what a mess. Be careful, sir. But let's take him out the same way. And it's a good thing that Sabin was here because Cyan, in his blind rage, may have gotten himself killed in this scenario. Boom, there goes a dispatch. Nice. And once again, I really don't mind killing Empire Grunts. Satisfying to do. But Science is, ugh, who released this poison? Look, we're gonna have to do this together. Science says, the thought had occurred to me as well. And we're gonna keep right on helping him. Let's throw down a suplex. It's just my favorite. It has the best animation. <laughs> Can't get enough of it. 
Sion says, thank you, kind sir. Sabin says, allow me to thank you. I am Sabin from Figaro. Now let's scram. Sion says, but what of my home, my family, my friends? Sabin says, look, if we stick around any longer, we'll have a regiment of troops down our throats. The soldier calls out, got him, over here. Ooh, boy. Sabin says, I have a great idea. Come over here. And look at this, it's Magitek armor. Now, it may look like Shadow's leaving there, but Sion says, Sir Sabin, what on earth are these? Sabin says, I'll explain later. Relax, just climb in. And he kind of gives him a push in there. Sion says, Sir Sabin, how might these abominations be manipulated? Sabin says, I'm getting sick of this. Thou art such a pain in the... Confound it all, I'm starting to talk like you. <laughs> Sabin says, now listen, just use those levers located by your hands. Sion says, Sir Sabin, it is I who is in your debt. Sabin says, forget it. Now come on. And that's right, we get to ride Magitek armor again. The soldier says, hey, what are you doing? And here's exactly what we're doing. Oh, we can't stop now. Running him over. And look at that. Shadow didn't leave us. He just grabbed his own Magitek armor. So Sabin says, then let's just bust through. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But before we do, I want to check out this little piece of dialogue. Nothing but poison this way. And I guess, like, just the air, the water, everything is just a wall of poison over there. Obviously, the game doesn't want us to go that way, but I think that's funny. End of the line. But here's the thing. It's not the end of the line. <laughs> it is the end of the line for this guy. We can take all of these out with a single bolt beam. It'll be no problem at all. It is really, really fun to pilot the Magitek armor, despite what it gets used for. And now if we back up, there's one extra fight we can get in, so why don't we just do it? They drop potions, and we can take them out in, like, a single single turn easily. I'm actually going to throw down a heal force, because why not? If you knock the formation down to just one of them, you can pretty easily give yourself a uh, full party, full heal by using a few heal forces, and then just bolt beaming him. I think maybe I'll try to get a heal force down in the next fight. Two potions there. That is nice. And now the Magitek armor blocks our way. So where we want to go is this way. There's nowhere to run. Okay, we got hit with a Pinesir attack. That is a little bit annoying. Let's throw down a heal force on Sabin. Bolt beam this guy. And then I guess we can just fire beam the regular soldiers. Because why not? What's wrong with a little variety? 72 on that. That's actually kind of... Kind of a lot of damage. I definitely don't like it. And why not an Ice Beam to round things out? I don't think I've actually used Ice Beam yet, so... Why not give it a try? counter-attack off, but that's just fine. And one potion for our trouble there. And we say, who said anything about running? That's right. <laughs> we're gonna run you right over, is what we're gonna do. Eight hundred and seventy damage. That is good, good damage. I love it. They are just no match for the three of us. And Sabin says, I can't believe we made it this far. Say, how do we get to Narsh from here? Sion says, Narsh, eh? Only one route? Through the forest to the south. Sabin says, all right, it's decided. Let's get going. 
and I am very, very excited to pick up the scenario in the Forest of the South. It's going to be really sweet, but it's going to have to wait until next time because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next Final Fantasy Friday.